like that Nike sign and uh, but first let's go back to the fonts another technique that I wanted to show yesterday um, on the first video is to use the text but instead you could do it here but I just found here it's easier to understand um, you can generate curve with text so look if you go here and you say Bézier you type your text you click you get a curve so there's no polygon here Q if you want this to be uh, um, a Bezier, you can go here, but no need to. Uh, now, what we can do with this is delete in edge this and this. So, what you end up having is actually just two curve, nothing more. So, there's no polygon, they are just curve. You don't even have to freeze them. Um, and I'm going to show you a cool trick. So we're going to name this curve, so we know which one is what. And for new layer. And actually, we don't even need this trick. We're thinking we don't even need a new layer. We're just going to keep this. And we're going to take this edge, double click, shift click this. And this is a tricky one because you've got a very sharp turn here. But let me show you. Uh, you can do a bridge click it's not perfect you see I'm not huge on those one I would rather have those line going like this but it's so quick that it's worth mentioning so now if you go here the only thing I don't like with this is that you end up with polygon and curve but uh, one thing you can do is go shift tab uh, yes, and you see in shift tab you see the, um, I think my face is on the other side. If you want to flip a face you go polygon, F, and now it's the other way. The only reason I did shift tab here is so I can delete the curve, I can see the curve very well. Um, delete, voila. So now we adjust with this so shift there uh, you go shift up again to uh, unshift and uh, usually after this I would go mesh clean up and thicken and that's it you're done so this is a pretty neat technique very fast even if you know uh, we call this a slash the flow here is not clean, but you could still shift tab them. So it's actually very fast to do it this way. Um, and as you know, I would add line. I would do. A, I would go a mesh a, a edge, add loop. I would do this roughly in the middle. I would shift click to do one here and I think I'm good uh, no I missed this one sometime when I shift click it doesn't see it I had this before let's try that Q no it did work um, and then uh, so we can put hair or things like this double click this shift double click this here here And then we can go B just a little bit. I would do, just do a chamfer here and uh, then we can uh, select this, scale it a bit. This is not exactly the center, but it's fine. 
it's worth doing. You might have to move it back after because here it's going down instead of uh, where it should go. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that you'll have to do this. Or we could have done a push, actually. Deform push would have done this better. And then this way, uh, R. Now you get a very clean uh, font. Uh, so now if I go shift tab, you see it's really clean. I forgot to uh, chamfer here. Uh, yeah, you could do a lot more. And now you could do a lot of cool stuff. You could, uh, just to show you an example, you could go in polygon, uh, fall off, linear, that's the most common one draw something like this and now if you scale your model will scale more here than there uh, so we could just go like this you see escape to get rid of the fall off so yeah it's really powerful shift tab you see just in a few minutes we get uh, pretty cool uh, fonts. Um, what else I wanted to show with the fonts? I think I forgot. Uh, I want to show you how to... Oh yeah, one last thing. Sometime I've seen a typeface where the font is chop and it looks like it's made of wood, of uh, veneer wood, and it looks like the font is spilling off, the wood is spilling off. So, one way to do this is to start the... Oh, sorry. This time, we don't want a curve, we want a polygon. Voila. So, one way is to start like this. Um, if you know you're going to peel this and you need more line going this way, you can go in polygon, go axis slice. Here it's X. And on X, you can put a lot, maybe even 20. Z, we don't need anything. Click. Uh, yeah, it's the right direction. Q. And um, what else can I do? Um, now I can go pen slice. And this is a very neat tool. You click once, click again, and it slices it. You see? Shift click to do a new one. I really like this tool, it's a lot of fun. Um, so don't do it perfect because if it was wood I don't think it'll be a, a split apart very well so I'm just going to do a few like this and uh, then there might be a faster way here to get uh, this extracted but the way we do it is to select the polygon that I need so you could just select one, uh, not the curve, the polygon, and okay, I'll do it by hand. This one. You can go up or right. I'm surprised it's not doing it. It's okay. Let's do it like this. Control X to paste to cut and for a new layer Control V to paste. Let's do it again. So go back here. This one Control X and Control V. Go back here. Control X and Control V. Okay, this should be enough. And 
and now what I can do it's uh, deform a bend control E click here uh, the first time it might be off a bit I'm surprised why it's that off I didn't scale it but if this happen it's okay just bring it back um, like this and it might take you uh, 30 seconds the first time to align it but then it'll be aligned so it's worth uh, spending that moment voila now it's good so the key with this make sure you're in polygon if this is facing the wrong way you only have three choice so try and now look it's gonna let you scroll this looks like the curve came with it that's all right we'll get rid of them after like that Q go to the second one control E uh, so this here Wow. the second one we can go Q control E again and this time we can just bend the tip here you see more or less uh, third one control E Q uh, control E And I think that's enough. Um, so now what we can do is pick them one by one. So here we don't really want a curve. Select those curves. Delete. Um, and uh, thicken. Trust a little bit because if it was veneer, I would trust me, it won't be a thick. It'll be a less than a mil. Yeah, something like this. Uh, maybe it's go one five. Q, second one, thicken. Voila, Q. For sure, uh, before doing this, I would apply the wood, um, so you know the wood is going the right way. After doing all of this, uh, I, I would select the font and go geometry mesh cleanup for sure. And also, one thing you could do it's here in the rounded, just a hair like 0.15 mm. So let's do a render F8. And now, yeah, you got a foam peeling. So if you put a wood texture, it would actually look quite decent. Um, let me go here. Shift A. Voila, now we see it. Okay. Um, what else I wanted to show you? Neon. So I've made one, so I'll just show you how uh, this one. So this is just a brick wall displaced. The key thing with Neon is to model a lot of detail, like wire. You can use the tube tool to do this. And uh, you know, have a wall if possible. Don't have it too, too far from the wall. And yeah, that's about it. I'm just gonna replace those so we have a new, uh, voila. Another tip with Neon, it's nice to have usually the light. I don't even think I have a light here. Uh, no, there's no light. 
but to have light or environment to be quite dark so I don't know I forgot which what I'm using I'm using one of the HDR here you don't need an HDR but this is what I was using and you see I'm very low I'm at 0.2 so quite low so if now I render f8 we get this and uh, to make this glow so I'm gonna go M glow or LED and here here you could change for sure the color so if it was a yellowish you could do it like this but this is not super important what's very important it's on the second tab where the transparency is here that will make your glow like a, a light so if now I do this you see it's gonna really emit yellow rays and you're gonna see them on the back and if one is not enough you could go 2.5 and it's still a yellow but a bright yellow and then at the end you can control this with the bloom sometimes I don't even use bloom actually but uh, the bloom will make it glow even more but you need to do F9 to play with the bloom okay so, uh, often in neon you have white going to yellow so you actually have a gradient uh, if you want to do this I usually go F6 uh, and they have one I think it's on the cloud but you can download it's on the material LED light uh, I can show it to you not this one maybe it's here this one it's my favorite one it's called tungsten I use this almost everywhere every time I do neon stuff I end up so you install it like this you'll go under your asset uh, blah 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 where is it here voila and then you just assign this one and you see it has the white the only trick with this is that sometimes it's too strong so whoever built this use a gradient and you see it's the amount so what you have to do is go edit gradient and this is the strength so you see it's using three times so if you want less you go 180 or something like so it's like 1.8 and like I said at the end the best is to do um, F9 and play with the bloom so I'm not gonna do this because it's gonna take so long with the recording I'm trying to think if I miss something um, there's more trick with curves and background constraint but I don't know if we, know, if we need to go that deep today um, so with the bloom you see no bloom uh, let me go one to one here we go so with neon you need vignette you need the edges to be darker so like this zero so it's much better to have some sort of vignette uh, always put a bit of tone map too to reduce the saturation but uh, yeah it's worth trying the bloom uh, here it's a bit strong so to get less of it you go higher so maybe 180 and then you compare so maybe here 130 voila and if you want it to glow away and you put more radius so if you put three four five it would glow even further so no bloom bloom here what I like with the bloom it brings orange where the other one doesn't but otherwise I prefer the oh, it's kind of anyway I hope this was helpful